If you guys watched my last, last video where I put in my welded diff and my Z1 diff bushings, you guys saw that I replaced my driver's side axle because the boot was torn. I think AutoZone may have sold me a faulty axle because this one's been humming very bad. I got a replacement one. I'm going to warranty swap that out right now. We're going to jack the car up, take the axle off, swap that out, and then we'll be on our way to Aaron's house to get this Mishimoto oil cooler installed. Super excited, guys, so stay tuned. Trying to take my fucking axle nut off. Had a breaker bar, broke it. Went to AutoZone, bought another breaker bar, broke it. In the arms of the angel. So I just completely gave up on doing the axle because if I broke one breaker bar and then I broke a second bar and then I went and I got a third bar, I'm not gonna try again because I'm gonna break the third one too. Third time is not the charm sometimes. I'd rather just wait it out, try to impact gun or something, who knows? Maybe I just never replace the axle ever, 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 ever again. But. <laughs> Not the best plan. Not the best plan, but it's a backup, right? <laughs> but anyways, we're uh, over here at Aaron's house, and he is working on cars. Just, yeah, just. <laughs> that's you don't see Aaron doing this often, but when you do, it's always a good time. Oh yeah. What are you working on today? Uh, this would be Black Aaron's car, <laughs> as most know him, because apparently I'm White Aaron. So I Definitely. guess I've earned the right. Right, Mike? Have I earned the right to say that? <laughs> But yeah, uh, we're pulling the engine out. And this is being rebuilt. He ordered a new one. I think he's using some of the stuff off of this. And then Lex is gonna come back, pick up the car, take it to Sacramento, and it's gonna get bodywork done, paint done. Whole new car. Whole new car pretty soon. And it's gonna be a lot better. Yeah. I was telling you the other day, I love uh, Fox bodies. Yeah. If I were to ever get one though, I would get a coupe. Not, yeah. not the uh, not the hatch. I'd definitely get a coupe over the hatch, which is weird because when it comes to 240s, I don't like coupes and I love hatch. We're gonna be installing my Mishimoto oil cooler today. Pretty excited to get that done. I don't have like a oil temp gauge, which would be nice to have so I can actually see the difference in how hot the oil gets. Hopefully it goes pretty smooth. I don't have the bracket. What the hell was that? Big ass fly. Oh. I don't have the bracket for the oil cooler but I don't think that's gonna be too much of an issue. We're just gonna get some self taps and uh, screw it right into the crash bar, the factory crash bar on there. And I do have a new Z1 coolant bypass hose that goes to the oil filter, so I'll be replacing that. And I'm gonna just knock out my oil change while I'm at it today too. So all of that is gonna be getting done, hoping for a smooth day. And we're gonna be helping Aaron pull the 50 motor out. Hopefully that goes smooth as well. So far so good. So far so good. So let's keep it that way. Yeah. All right guys, so here is the oil cooler we're gonna be uh, putting on. It has like a couple bends right there where the brackets go, but not really too worried about it. It'll still hold up. Being completely honest, I don't even know if the oil cooler is a actual Mishimoto. I know that some Mishimoto oil coolers on the black ones, they have the silver Mishimoto logo in the middle and some of them don't. So I'm not entirely sure, but the fittings and all the lines are Mishimoto. The sandwich plate is Mishimoto. I'm not really too worried about it. I am gonna screw it in right under here so you can see it through the ducts on the bumper. I think it's gonna look pretty nice. And to install it, literally all you have to do is just take out your oil filter, put this where the oil filter goes. There's a screw that goes right through the middle, put the oil filter over it and that's literally it. And then you just screw it in wherever you want, mount it in however you want. I have the bumper off as you can see. I'm gonna just go ahead and get the car jacked up, go knock out my oil change and then we'll knock that out last. So I had the sandwich plate connected already to the lines, but I took it off to make it a little bit easier to install. So what you're gonna do is, you grab the sandwich plate, you make sure the gasket, it's towards the block. So that goes like that. Then you grab this little fitting right here, and that goes like that. Screw that in. Now that the sandwich plate is installed and I tighten this down, that's actually a 27 millimeter. We're just gonna grab these two, uh, connect them right here, one on each side. Like Aaron said, doesn't matter which one goes where. And then once that's connected, the lines are already there. 
So all we have to do is uh, screw in the oil cooler and that will be it. I was going to try to connect everything without taking anything apart, but I found it's just a lot easier to do it this way. Did the sandwich plate first. After that, I took the fittings off of the lines, connected those, and now I'm gonna connect the lines to here, run them through, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. This is definitely the easiest way because now I don't have to deal with the hoses being all in my way. This is easy, quick, 27 millimeter. Now it's time for the hoses. Okay guys, the sandwich plate is on and the lines are connected. I decided to turn it and connect it this way instead of having this piece right here at the bottom. And I did that because for when I do my oil changes and I replace the filter, if I have the lines right here, of course, as soon as I take the oil filter off, all the oil is just gonna get all over the lines and I'm gonna have to clean everything up and it's gonna get dirty and ugly. But if I connect them this way, then when I take the oil filter off, nothing gets dirty, nothing gets wet, much more easier and practical. Now, all I have to do is bolt in the oil cooler right here. Uh, somewhere around here is where I'm gonna do it so you can see it through the ducts right there. And then just zip tie the hoses up so they're not hanging and we'll be good to go. Okay guys, everything is now done. The oil cooler is on, filters on. All I have to do now is just add the oil but here it is that's how it looks uh, i was able to bolt it in right there which uh, is perfect because you're going to be able to see it right through the duct i'll show you guys in a second once i put the bumper on it looks really good put some screws in right there that bracket bent a little bit but it should be all right got the line zip tied so they don't hang so low and then got the sandwich plate right there and i also put the z1 coolant hose on so that's on we're leaking from there i'm gonna go ahead toss the bumper right on and you'll see how it looks bumper is on guys and damn that looks good right there i kind of wish this was the silver oil cooler but it's okay it is okay as long as it performs how it should that is all that matters looks really good pretty excited to have this on hopefully the car acts a little bit better so I'll just go ahead and put the oil in now and she'll be good to go oil is in First startup, let's go baby! so good baby so i had the car running for a few minutes and it started to overheat because of the coolant hose that i disconnected in the bottom and i swapped out so i have to burp the coolant on here now but right now we wait for the motor to cool down so i can pop open the radiator cap look where aaron is at with the 50 motor yeah it is out Fine. on a on a one to ten how big of a pain in the butt cheeks I mean, we're gonna see maybe like a six or a seven. However, the dirtiness of it is like a ten and a half. A ten and a half. Yeah, that's the so, shoe size. Yeah, that made, <laughs> that made it a little bit more fun. But yeah, and we. I'm not spilled. into this job, man, to stay clean. So yeah, and we that. spilled a whole bunch of transmission fluid and stuff. So it's all right. That was now, fun. Yeah, now it's a drain and fill for him. It's a, <laughs> there we go. Made it made his job a little bit easier. Right. But yeah, guys. Uh, motor's out, yeah. and now it is off to the shop. Part boys. Part boys. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then we're just gonna wait off a few more minutes on this one and I'm gonna burp the coolant. Hopefully it's not a pain in the butt cheeks to do because if you guys own a G35 350Z, you know that burp burning. You know that burping the coolant in these cars is the biggest pain in the butt cheeks. And it takes forever sometimes. So let's see what happens. I've had a few people DM me in the past and asking me how to bleed their Gs or Zs because they bleed them and bleed them. No, basically yeah, that's the easiest way that's the easiest way don't ever disconnect a coolant hose nothing <laughs> not ever if the hose rips put tape over it 
But yeah, I've had a few people ask me how to burp these because they are very complicated to burp. You have to get one of these spill-free funnels with the adapter right there. Fill it up with coolant. In this case, all I have is water. You want to jack the front of the motor up as high as you can. Turn the car on and you have this bleeder screw right here, right back there. You want to open that some, turn the car on, have coolant in here, and then just let it do its magic. It may take a few hours, but this is the only way. I've tried doing it without jacking the car up. It's worked a couple times, but for the most part, it doesn't. I've tried doing it without unscrewing the bleeder valve. It's worked before, but for the most part, it hasn't. So this is the most effective way for me. This is how I do it, and this is how I recommend you guys to do it. And also, turn your heater on, full blast. Yeah, 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 baby, yeah. You know, guys, burping, coolant, and 100 degree weather is not fun. Like, you see how beaming that sun is? Do you see that? I bet you guys can feel the heat through the camera right now. It's not fun. I think it's about good to go. Uh, I was just holding the gas at about uh, 3K RPMs, and there was no overheating. There was no more bubbles coming out. So I think we should be good. All right, guys, car is back on the floor, finally. Wasn't too bad of a burping process. Probably took about 30, 45 minutes. I checked underneath for any leaks. There's no leaks from the oil cooler at all. Everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and close the vlog out right here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like down below. Leave a comment, subscribe if you are new. And until the next video, guys, peace out.